Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and it's been a while. So I wanted to talk about um, some books that I read, although it is kind of late in the month. This is about February and I didn't read a ton of books, but there were two books that I wanted to talk about. And so I was like, well, I might as well just call it a February wrap up. Um, so yeah, it's, it's late, but oh well, you're gonna have to deal with it. Hopefully you had a wonderful February. I had a great January, which I was so excited for the start of the year. And then per usual, my brain was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so I definitely slowed down in February. Um, and I read more in March so far, but that's because I'm reading manga. So those are going by quicker than a novel, but we're here to talk about February. So there were three books that I finished and one that I DNF'd. So I'm quickly going to tell you the first, I don't know if it's the first one I finished, but the first one I remember. So is it Finna or Fina? Finna? I can't remember. I listened to this audiobook. I think it came in from the library and I was like, okay, why not? I would just keep putting it up, putting it off and it's really short. It's like 103 pages. So I think the audiobook maybe took me an hour, hour and a half, but it's essentially like an alternate universe kind of place where this Ikea-esque workplace, um, but also has like all these alternate universes. So we're following this employee who recently broke up with one of her co-workers and, um, or one of their co-workers, I can't remember what their pronouns were. <laughs> so that's hectic. But then also just like the commentary, just the little bullshit that they get from like their manager and stuff about like, things they have to do at work and like hey we don't pay you to do that or mm, sorry we need to cut some people and send you home it's just so like a, a really quick easy capitalism is is the worst plus like multiverse because essentially a customer goes missing and there's like this protocol because this happens because there's like floating basically like windows or black holes or whatever you want to call it into these other universes and they have this like somebody's gotta go do it and it's like well we're choosing you of course our main character and the ex and so it's just like watching them run through these worlds trying to find this person trying not to get killed also still the responsibilities of their job and life stressors still following them so it was really interesting oh i wasn't like wowed by it but it was a really easy audiobook a quick read that I enjoyed. So I know that there's a second one that I think someone said they liked even more. That's defect, but it's spelled, I'll put it up so you can see it. So I don't know, it might be worth reading because again, this one's a little longer. It looks like 170 pages. So maybe I can get the audio because it was fun. You know, it was like not meh, but also not like mind blowing, but like, I don't expect every book to be mind blowing. And it was a meh, so that's a win. <laughs> And then I read, um, I had this from NetGalley, so Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes. Last year I read, what was it called? I keep wanting to call it Ghost Ship because that's what it reminds me of, but it's called Dead Silence, but it's basically like Ghost Ship in space. And I thought that was so good. So I was really excited about Ghost Station. And this one did not hit the same for me. Um, a similar thing to uh, Dead Silence was like, I did not love the main protagonist. She was so frustrating um but the rest of the story and the interactions with like the different crew members and dead signs made up for that and this one she's worse like she's just way worse um she just kept making terrible decisions and i'm like girl what are you doing the pacing was really weird i felt like it was like really slow but also really like we're we're not getting enough of the story at the same time and then i feel like it kind of dragged and then like everything happened in kind of like the last 15 20 percent um i'm trying to look at what i wrote because i don't remember a lot about it but like i didn't connect to any of the characters i didn't feel the same eeriness or like apprehension um that I felt reading Dead Silence, like Dead Silence made me feel uneasy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was hoping for that same thing with this one, Ghost Station. Um, and that didn't happen. So it was just a very mediocre. I gave it three stars. Very disappointed in that one. I would give the author another chance because Dead Silence was so good. But this one just did not work for me. 
Wah. Okay, third. Um, we're getting to the two books I really want to talk about. So this third one, I did not finish, but I did read half of it and then I had it spoiled for me. <laughs> I had Robin spoil it for me and it was a Patreon, our book club read. So we were discussing it and I have a lot of thoughts about it. And that's Feybound by Sara Al Arifi. Is that, is that their name? I'm so bad. I've been out of this recording game. Okay. Yes. Now, I did not look at the synopsis because when do I do that? <laughs> but, and this author's first book was, I can't remember anything at the moment, The Final Stripe. Now, I have not read The Full Final Stripe. I DNF that one. And I had always thought that I would go back to it. Spoiler alert, after reading Fae Bell, I don't think I'm going to go back to The Final Stripe. I'm just thinking maybe this author isn't for me. Granted, there's only two chances and I haven't finished either of their books but like I don't know I love the idea of Faye especially non-white Faye so I was just excited by the title alone and who the author was I was like "Ooh, this is something this sounds right up my alley and also it came in my fairy loot before I canceled it so I was like well I'm already gonna have a copy perfect so it was our book club pick It felt unfinished. It felt like a draft. Um, I don't know if y'all remember when I suffered through the nightmare that was Book of Night by Holly Black and how that felt like a first draft. This, not saying like they were the same, but this felt like a first draft. Like it felt like it was very much an outline of here's my idea, here's the different like magical creatures, here's the different worlds or events that have happened, here's the lore, but like, this needs to be expanded on I need to work on these relationships I need to it needed so much more and usually you know I am not one to say a book needs to be longer this book was like right under 400 pages and I think it needed 50 to 100 more pages um it just was like again it was going by quickly but it also felt so slow but yet we weren't getting enough the writing did not seem to flow it, it, it that's why to me it felt like a first draft because it felt like some choppy sentences typed out that you would like kind of go back over and smooth out it just felt like we were just jumping from from point to point so we have our main character whose name I already forgot and they're like recently promoted to general or whatever in their army they're an elf and they their sister younger sister is like a seer gives this prediction of like you're gonna see your enemy in the east or something so they go out on the scouting mission don't come across any any enemies but she's like well my sister said let's go to the east so they go she loses like half or more of her army so she's punished and she's exiled um and so her sister and like her right below her i don't know her captain or something they set out to look for her so she's being taken somewhere to be dropped in the middle of nowhere because she's being exiled and then her sister and the dude are going to look for her so for some reason I thought that the whole I will retract that because I don't want to spoil anything if you want to read it what I was prepared for was not what I got and like I said everything just seemed like we just seemed to skip like a lot of foundation a lot of building and it would be like here's this one thing you turn the page now we've moved on and I'm like I would go back and be like did I miss something because I was reading it on my kindle and I was like maybe I tapped too quickly I've done that and it's moved a couple pages no it just would go on and I was messaging Robin while I was reading this and I'm like did I miss something and she said no 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 there that's what I'm reading too so we were like maybe we got defective copies <laughs> but I <laughs> I also didn't know there was going it was going to be like romance because and I love romance okay but I didn't know that was going to be in this one and it was not done well I'm sorry I felt no chemistry between the people who become interest it just seemed to come out of nowhere um just no logic logicking again where I felt the so much needed so much more description like the world I was so confused so Robin thought we were in the middle of a desert I thought we were just like I don't know on a dirt road in the middle of like some patchy woods but apparently we were in a rainforest and I'm like oh I've been in a rainforest I don't think you did the research on describing a rainforest because what 
the magic was not fleshed out and explained very well. I'm very confused on how this drum magic works. Um, there's like a beginning chapter which has like short a bit of lore to explain what happened way back when between elves, humans, and fae. But I'm still kind of confused about how in the present time of the book that really plays out. And obviously we eventually get Faye in the story. And it's like, it just doesn't, I'm just like, so y'all were here doing, huh? Like I, I just nothing. And I usually, you give me a good description, I visualize it very well. I was just very confused with how things looked, how things worked, the history. Um, another thing was these animals obeya i think they may it may be pronounced that are very special and hunted for these drums that i don't that do drum magic that i don't understand and i can't tell you like usually <laughs> that you describe a magical creature you know you usually can envision is it serpent like is it dragon or dragon-esque is it a bird is it a, a cat like usually there's something we can grasp on and then maybe the author you know you get a little is it is it a griffin is it a uh i'm trying to think of something is it a unicorn is it a what's the thing a centaur like at first <laughs> reading this i was picturing pic picturing like a little buffalo like a, a buffalo but small and then then there's a part in the story where it's in a tree like it's on a tree branch and I'm like so no the buffalo vision is not working so now is it like a leopard but then it it's like they're big enough to like carry people it is very confusing just everything to me felt very starter and that it needed a lot of reworking development expounding so what I had spoiled for me I was like mm. Hmm. And like, okay, turn not turns around, but there's obviously a setup for the next one. Like, ooh, I want to read the next book. If you like that book, it kind of does end on that kind of cliff cliffhanger of like, this is the next thing we have to do. But I will not be continuing. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I just yeah, it was not for me. I didn't like there was the only thing I can find <laughs> that I liked was that the world was just very queer normative like uh you know non-binary like just the way pronouns were used and different things were just talked about it just made it a very queerness was just very normalized in the world I think that was a great highlight but I, other than that I didn't connect to any characters um it seemed very predictable it read very young even though it's supposed to be adult I didn't feel any um sparks with the romance I didn't like the writing I didn't like the world like it, so that was Feybound a very sad because my copy was beautiful but hell beautiful gowns beautiful gowns I've canceled that subscription okay um so yeah I'm just sad I want like obviously I have read Sarah Janet and I've read what other Faye because I didn't read Holly Black's Faye I'm trying to think of what other popular Faye right now I don't know but my first fae was the fever series by karen marie moaning and i was like ooh, like i want fae more like that and i don't know where to get it so if you know a fae like the karen marie moaning books tell me because that's what i need but this one wasn't for me no and lastly the other book that i read was bride by ali hazelwood and i know some of you might be like jessica why would you read that and so I want you to back it up, okay? I, of course, read The Love Hypothesis, which is probably one of my more popular videos, and I hated it. <laughs> and no, Mara, it's not because I have anything against the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. I want to be on the committee. Anyway, I read another one of Allie Hazelwood's books, which was, I don't remember, but I read it. <sighs> and I liked that one. I don't know if it was Love the, you know, they're all very similar, whatever. But I read another one. I like that one better. But I felt like when I saw Bride, I was like, I feel like she can really lean into paranormal romance. Like, I feel like that would be a lot 
it would work really good for her writing and so bride is a she's a human he's a werewolf and it is a marriage of like alliance like a political um marriage because it's humans vampires werewolves and they need this marriage for some peace yada 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 you get that in the book and of course well i won't say of course but there's some things we're like oh okay mm -hmm, i see what this is gonna be so i again i don't i think her writing is better suited for paranormal romance um this, since this is a werewolf there is nodding google that if you would like um which didn't bother me i'm like i mean it would make sense they're not a human so i would expect for it to work differently i will say i didn't love her the main character i didn't hate her but i was like miss ma'am let's use our brains you know sometimes um but overall i enjoyed it i really love the so i think the dude i forgot what his name is i don't know nobody's name what is his name low moreland i think he has like a younger sister that he's taking care of um and i really love that relationship because you know i love me a man taking care of a child that ain't his even a man taking a child care of a child that is his but a man taking care of a child that ain't his in a romance book oh sweet jesus i just really loved that relationship and then the bond that she forms with her and um i think it feels like there's going to be another one i don't know how many but at least another one especially with how it ends um and so it feels like we did spend a fair amount of time setting up like setting up the world the history the conflicts between the different you know vampires werewolf and human and l less time than i would have liked on like the romance part of it but i like i understand if this is going to be a series or even just setting it up for the next one but so you know some of the things because I have read other paranormal romance I've read romance in general so like I know certain plot points right and it wasn't like the best thing I've ever read they're not like my OTP but I enjoyed it um I read it pretty quickly it didn't take me very long to get through it um and yeah I thought he I, I liked him as a hero she could use some work I hope she's if we see her again smarter in the next one but I'm trying to think like it doesn't like stand out to me but I didn't hate it and I'm trying to think of other things to add here and I'm, I'm drawing a blank drawing a blank so I can't really remember so I think I gave it I don't think I rated it I would give it like a 3.75 round up to a 4 probably um yeah I'm, I'm having a hard time like putting my finger on what else was lacking but it was just it was a good time you know um but I'm not like oh my god thinking about them all the time this is my ship oh you know what I'm saying so like didn't hate it I'm gonna read the next one uh whenever that comes out I don't know if I necessarily want to read her contemporaries anymore because I don't need this um if they're going to continue to be like the same stem setup which works for some people but I don't think I need that but um if she continues to write paranormal I definitely will stay tuned because it's a quick good time I didn't waste any money I got it from the library I read it fast so I had a good time so you know every book can't be outstanding because then those books wouldn't be outstanding then every book would just be good you know what i'm saying anyway that's it i'm right under 20 minutes hallelujah amen but those were the only books that i read in february um but i really just wanted to talk about those last two so if you've read i mean if you've read any of them let me know but especially if you've read Feybound, and especially if you really liked Feybound, can you please explain it to me like i just need to know i want to know and also, if you read Brad, I'd love to know your thoughts. I hope you're taking care of yourself. It's a rough world out here. Um, but thank you for watching. Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Oh, wait. I wanted to... <laughs> I wanted to plug quickly my Patreon because I have not been posting as much here on YouTube and even when I was regular it was only once a week but if you want more content I definitely post more on Patreon. Um, I do sprints at least once if not twice a week 
um, sometimes they're reading focused sometimes they're productivity focused I have extra videos that I post up there that are more like if I do any kind of book haul if I do a little vlog if I do like I just post more there so if you would like more content that way you can find me on patreon um, but that's it okay bye